How not to learn Japanese? Number one, coming to Japan to teach English, hanging out with other English teachers after work, complaining how it's impossible to make friends with Japanese people because they don't go out of their way to adjust themselves to your communication style. Leaving Japan after two years of misery, which will make you feel bitter about Japan, so you start posting negative comments on YouTube videos about Japan, which you can't stop watching. People seem to have this idea that you need to come to Japan to learn Japanese, and if you do, you will automatically learn Japanese. But things don't work like that. That's as unrealistic as Power's plan to win the Nobel Prize. Even if you live in Japan, you still need to make an effort to learn Japanese, and you don't have to live in Japan to learn Japanese, and that's why I will teach you the kind of Japanese that real life Japanese people today actually speak, because textbooks and apps don't really teach you everyday real life Japanese. So click the link in the description and subscribe to my email group. Number 2. Watching anime with English subtitles. If you think I just said that you shouldn't watch anime to learn Japanese, that's not what I said. In fact, anime can be great resources to learn Japanese and I've made a video about how you can learn Japanese from anime. The problem is if you turn on English subtitles, you will just end up reading the subtitles. So you're not gonna learn a lot of Japanese. The solution is very simple. Turn on Japanese subtitles. This way, you are forced to understand Japanese. If you are a beginner, you can watch anime you've already watched so that you don't have to be stressed about understanding the story. You can also stop the anime and look up words you don't understand. Another great thing to do is repeating characters' lines. It's a great way of practicing your pronunciation. Like this. Except that she doesn't know everything, she only knows what she knows. Number 3. Asking questions to random strangers on the internet, including native speakers. Because everybody knows that random strangers on the internet are credible sources and they know exactly what they're talking about. I see people ask questions about Japanese in my comment sections and some friendly strangers answer them. I know they have good intentions, but the problem is a lot of these answers are simply wrong, even though they sound convincing. Of course, there are good answers, but if you are not fluent in Japanese already, how would you know if the answer is right? You wouldn't. And native speakers of Japanese are not any better because they don't really know how to explain their language. When I hire Japanese teachers for my online courses, I always ask them to explain some basic concepts, and a surprising number of them get them wrong. So don't trust random strangers on the internet because they are as credible as Hayao Miyazaki saying that he will stop making anime. Number 4. Studying for JLPT My video wouldn't be complete if I didn't make a provocative statement like this. But let me explain. One of the biggest problems with JLPT is word frequency. Ask yourself this question. Why are you learning Japanese? Are you learning Japanese so that you can understand and communicate with real-life Japanese people? Or maybe you're learning Japanese so that you can watch anime without subtitles. If that's the case, a most logical thing to do is learning words, expressions, and grammar rules that are most frequently used in real life and fiction. And then after that, you can learn less common words and expressions. But JLPT is not structured like that. They often ignore the most common words and expressions and teach you much less common ones. This applies especially to lower levels such as N5 and N4. N3 and up are much better. Some people argue that foreigners only need to know formal and polite expressions to express themselves, but they forget that communication is a two-way process. It's not like you're the only one who speak and other people just listen to you. You will still have to understand what other Japanese people say because otherwise, how are you supposed to understand your Japanese anime waifu or husband? So you have to learn words and expressions that we real life Japanese people use even though you might not use them immediately on your next trip because you have too much social anxiety to talk to people. The most comprehensive way of learning Japanese is using real life resources as soon as possible. But if you prioritize low frequency words and expressions, it will take you unnecessarily longer before you can start using authentic materials. This is why many people go to a language school in Japan 
but they can't understand real life Japanese people after months or sometimes years. But here's the thing. You might think that I'm saying that you shouldn't take JLPT, but that's not what I said. Taking JLPT is fine. What I'm saying is, over optimizing your learning for JLPT isn't efficient if your goal is to understand real life Japanese or fiction in Japanese. Number five, not using authentic materials. And by authentic materials, I mean things that are made for native speakers. So they can be YouTube videos in Japanese, hem, family friendly anime, TV shows, films, radio shows, songs, video games, books, manga, etc. I have the impression that many people are kind of afraid of using authentic materials because they think that understanding authentic materials can be as difficult as beating Takagi-san. So many people keep using textbooks and apps which will certainly help but they are completely incomplete because they only cover a tiny portion of the language. And they completely ignore words and expressions that we very often use in real life. Sooner or later, you will have to use authentic materials and the sooner the better. But that doesn't mean you have to watch the entire One Piece without subtitles even if you don't understand anything because if you don't understand anything, you're not learning much. What you can do is make them easy to understand by looking up words and reading grammar explanations. This is a great way of learning because you have the context where words are used. I explained how to do this in another video so you should watch it. But the point is, you should always use authentic materials regardless of your choice of instructional materials including mine where I teach you the kind of Japanese that real life Japanese people today actually speak because textbooks and apps are outdated and unnatural. So click the link and subscribe to my email group Japanese with Utah.